Hey everybody, going to do just a kind of a brief review here of uh, Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. This is of course the Netflix show that has caused a lot of controversy. So of course I checked it out and uh, here's my two cents. I recognize I am late to the party as usual and I'm also not adding that much to the, the discourse here as per usual. But uh, I did review Blonde very recently for also for Netflix and uh, you know I talked a lot about in that review about the dramatization of these types of, you know, historical figures, mythologized figures that are played up to such uh, large extents that we don't really remember them as real, really. And, uh, you know, that's been a draw, obviously, in Hollywood for ages. Uh, but it's become, I think, at this point, it's become such a an easy way of, of marketing film, TV. It's easy packaging, it's easy money, and it's also easy fodder, I think, for like uh, a critical acclaim, Academy Awards and that type of thing. And I'm I'm very tired of the formula. And when I heard about the show, you know, that that basically was my reaction. Um, but it, it was very controversial uh, to a lot of people, uh, quite similarly to Blonde in a lot of ways. The surviving victims, as well as, you know, like the family of, of, of the victims, they are offended by the material and like, you know, the fetishization of Jeffrey Dahmer. And I, I can understand that from their perspective. And beyond that, I think a lot of audiences just have a, a problem with uh, the apparent glorification of uh, an already very very, very sensationalized story. Uh, but here's my perspective on, on that particular aspect of things. I'm not really interested in criticizing it for the exploitive angle in the same way that a lot of other people are. Uh, and I, I said the same thing with, with, with Blonde. A lot of people found the exploitation in that offensive, whereas I thought it was kind of making a point about the nature of exploration. And, you know, film is inherently manipulation, just, you know, in its purest form. If you can't film it, it's not real, as the saying goes. And um, dramatization of this nature naturally is going to feed into certain appetites, for sure. No pun intended there. But, you know, as a creator, you're either going to be very conscious of that and you're going to tailor the piece so that it, you know, it has that sort of awareness or you're just going to completely surrender yourself to the indulgence. There have been a million documentaries on Dahmer and there have been plenty of dramatizations, but that's the case with pretty much any historical event that's a big deal. People are going to interpret it in kinds of ways. And uh, to me, that's not really the interesting thing. As a creator, I think you're free to, you know, make whatever you want, but in terms terms of my enjoyment of it and, and what satisfies me, yeah, you know, I like, you know, something to be a little bit different. I like a twist on material we've already seen just because that's me. Because again, most importantly, we have to remember that this is a television show. It is meant to be entertainment. First and foremost, and I don't think that should be forgotten. For me, I tend to be uh, interested in, in stories that explore the nature of fetishization while also being aware of, you know, being a product of it. To me, one of the great serial killer films is, is Zodiac by David Fincher. And I think when you watch this show, I think in aesthetic, you can definitely sense a lot of the... Uh, the, the Fincher influence. But I see it as a very cerebral type of meditation on a certain type of romanticism when it comes to violence in the cinema, and it, but it's done in a very, very sophisticated way. Whereas my issue with this particular show, the, the Dahmer show, is that it, it, it seems to really think it has some sort of very profound uh, social commentary going on here. And that social commentary is kind of acting as an umbrella for the narrative and it's kind of going in all kinds of different directions because this show tackles a lot of material, I will say that. But it's one of those pieces that just can't help but surrender uh, to its its main character, to its subject naturally, without the dignity of being able to own up to that. Like you can pretend that the victim stories are the ones that should be at the forefront of everything, but um, yeah, it is naturally more interested in the villain. So that just felt a little bit disingenuous to me and I prefer artistic works that are a little bit more consistent when it comes to its messaging. But I will say in the show's defense, there are things that I, I liked about it because to me, it did a lot of things that the other dramatizations don't really cover. And that is uh, very refreshing for me as somebody who has been through my Dahmer obsessive phase, you know, when I was a, a teenager. But one of the things I really liked about this show was that it, it actually focused on Dahmer's father, Lionel. And, uh, you know, I think that's interesting just because, you know, he's just kind of like a, a normal parent who seems to have been thrown into extraordinary circumstances. And he's played by Richard Jenkins, which, you know, good choice. Instantly when I, I saw him on screen, I'm like, oh, okay, well, we know that this is a good decision. I don't even have to watch anything. And I know what it is because Jenkins always delivers. And he gives a lot of this really schlocky dialogue. I think a lot of, um, 
humility and dignity for sure. And I just personally, I love seeing the parent's point of view in these sorts of situations, a, a sort of we need to talk about Kevin sort of thing, you know, Lynn Ramsey's film. I think it should be explored more. Like, you know, I'm very interested in the, in the Columbine shootings as an example. And I read Sue Klebold's book, you know, Dylan Klebold's mother. That's where things get really, really, I think, complex. And when it comes to uh, the way they interpret Lionel here, you know, he's very much an observer, but he's also very close you know, to the person it's happening to, and yet he has no control over any of it. But because he's so close to said person, he's naturally going to feel so many burdens because of it. And it's it's really terrible, but at the same time, you feel very conflicted about it. But I do think he's probably the most compelling character in the entire show, at least uh, from my perspective. Uh, but I also do have to say, I like that they did branch out and start telling the stories of the victims uh, and, you know, just all the people that were affected just, you know, in Milwaukee. And uh, I do think studying the victim stories are really important. Often they are glossed over and, uh, you know, it can be incredibly enlightening, especially here when you're seeing how they deal with the aftermath. And it is true, rarely are those people ever given a, a real voice. And especially in this particular case, when so many of the victims were, you know, minorities. I thought that Niecy Nash was excellent uh, in this show. And yeah, she is, you know, meant to be as a character, a very broad archetypal figure that is, you know, representing that oppression. While I do find that device a little bit too on the nose in terms of how it's executed here, I think that, yeah, she did a really good job because, yeah, she is really the surrogate for the audience, uh, first and foremost, as the, as Jeffrey Dahmer's neighbor. But she carried a lot of that emotion on her shoulders in her performance in a way that felt I don't know, very honest, and I appreciated that. And I do like seeing things uh, from her perspective. Seeing the way that she does so much and is is barely thanked at all, I think that was a, a really kind of powerful way to end things. And I also thought that the legal stuff was really interesting. A lot of the like police procedural aspects of the case is is very, very interesting to me. You know, just hearing the lawyers speaking with the, the Dahmer family and the defense plea, the legal jargon, you know, all coiled around this deeply gruesome gruesome uh, uh, thing, this, this shocking event, uh, but having to see it, you know, analyzed and spoken about with all these cold words with like, you know, from a business aspect of things. And also through that business talk, the way the morals just kind of slip, you know, they kind of just get thrown to the side. All that is very interesting. It, it, it tests, I think, the, the character's morals for sure, especially people like Lionel. And again, that's part of why I found him so interesting, his arc. And it really poses new questions for the audience, I think. But Having said all of that, and I, I did say this at the beginning, but uh, every pro that I have here, there is a, a, a con to it at the same time. This is a Ryan production, Ryan Murphy production, I'm sorry. Uh, and, you know, if you know his work, you know what to expect from him. He is, you know, his brand is fetishization of like historical events, especially like iconic personas. We know this and we know that that kind of camp is, is typically part of um, the appeal, but... Uh, I just find very little of his work to be clever or, as I said, you know, self-aware in the ways that I would like for it to be just, just personally. But, you know, again, the demand for this type of thing is very hot now, especially for, for streaming services and Academy Awards. And when I watch this show, yeah, it does feel very much like it was created for that purpose. He has capitalized on a commodity, though, and um, it's like he knows exactly what buzzwords to generate, you know, conversation, very much like uh, clockwork. But again, you know, my problem is more just the quality of the show. It's, it's the hypocrisy of it. Like I said, I think it's fantastic to get to hear, you know, from different people that we normally don't get to hear from in a story where the focus is always on Dahmer. But to sit here and pretend like all of this is really in the, the best interest of the victims, I think is, is not fully accurate. And uh, especially, you know, at the end of the show, when it shows the pictures of the real victims uh, at the end, it's like... I don't know, that that felt very much like virtue signaling, it put me off. And I do keep bringing up Blonde because I do think it's a, a good kind of discussion to have in relation to this because let me be clear, I did not like Blonde. Certainly didn't care for the execution of it, but one thing that I did appreciate about the film is that it is not trying to be some, you know, biopic in the traditional sense. It's not trying to be something about Marilyn Monroe. As I said in my review, it's called Blonde. It's not called Marilyn or, or anything like that. It is meant to be a, uh, a fever dream. It is an abstraction. It's a study of that kind of mythology. It's a study of, you know, the exploitation of those kinds of figures and, and the way it's experienced through, you know, the cinematic filter, through the voyeurism. And again, while I struggled with a lot of aspects of it, that is something that I found to be very refreshing uh, 
compared to a lot of stuff like this as an example. And as the show begins to conclude, that's when I think you really recognize that uh, the thesis is just way too all over the place. And um, when you, especially when you consider the first half of the show, which is very much like this lumbering sort of experience where it's ringing every bit of drama uh, out of the Dahmer backstory as it can. I was much more interested in, you know, like what I said, you know, the stuff that comes in later, especially the aftermath when it comes to the victims and all the the, the legal stuff. Um, but yeah, obviously, especially in the show, it's so fascinated uh, by Dahmer and it it does want you to sympathize with him Absolutely, you know, to a degree. And the whole monologue at the end, especially in that court scene, saying that we should like move on and that there is a danger to it, exploring the Dahmer psychology. It's like, dude, you, like saying that after what we have just experienced, hell no. And a lot of that sympathy too, you know, just comes from the casting choice of Evan Peters, who is a, a very good actor, I think. And he's got a, you know, a certain menacing quality to him uh, just in his eyes and in his face. But I do think he is a little bit, too attractive for the part, I think, uh, too Hollywood. And I am tired of, of seeing that sort of thing, like casting Amanda Seyfried as like Elizabeth Holmes just feels really, you know, strange. I don't know, it just takes me out of it. But I don't know, his performance, it felt like it was lacking something. And I don't think that's necessarily his fault. I think it was just, you know, the casting of him. Um, but when I think about the real Dahmer, there's something a little bit, well, I shouldn't say a little bit, there is something just imposing just about the way he is built. Even though when he speaks, he's very, you know, soft-spoken, he sounds very shy, maybe a little bit awkward, but the key is that you wouldn't suspect him. But I think that Evan Peters is a little bit too conscious of that, too conscious of the mischief and how to play all of that up. And I don't think it's a bad performance at all. It's just, you know, it's missing the mark, but that's that's not uncommon. There hasn't been a portrayal of Dahmer that I've ever really loved. And I doubt there ever will be, but you know, the show is what it is. Um, it is more trashy entertainment, I think, for the suburban normies. Just for me, I don't know, I sort of question what is the point of making something like this unless you're going to really push in a, a new direction. And yes, in some ways they absolutely tried and I have to give them credit for that. But um, like I said, I found a lot of that intent to feel very hypocritical and somewhat annoying. Because again, I think it's a lot less noble than it thinks it is. And uh, honestly, I think I would have respected them more if they had just been more shameless about the exploitive angles of things, especially after seeing the ending of this, which did feel a bit insulting to me as a, as a viewer. But uh, yeah, that is my very kind of impromptu review of the, the monster, a Dahmer story. I guess that is what it is called. And um, let me know what you guys think about it. Because as I said, it's obviously, you know, a hot topic for uh, whatever reason. And I'm, I'm curious about your opinions. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to plug my website. As always, it is deepfocuslens.com. I'm an artist. I do commission portraits. And I also sell prints of my work. If that is something that you are interested in, you can always go to the website below. And if you have a question about a commission or a print, you can always email me. My email is in the description box below as well. Also, I would like to give a shout out to my patrons who are wonderful. Guys, thank you so much for all of your support. If you are interested in supporting, the link for that is below, as well as the rest of my social media information. You can watch more videos here, and you can subscribe if you'd like. Catch you next time.